it possible that a $45 torque wrench is actually better than one that costs $450? We've got 10 different brands to test today. Let's find out. In the first test, we'll measure the performance of the torque wrenches at five different torque settings. Then we'll measure the accuracy of the torque wrenches measuring in the counterclockwise direction. I'll then cycle all the torque wrenches a thousand times each and we'll see how accurate they are after a lot of use. At a bargain price of only $44, the least expensive brand we'll be testing is made by Lexivon. Includes a very nice carrying case. Comes with a certificate of calibration. The torque wrench range for the Lexivon is 25 to 250 foot pounds. Reinforced ratchet gear head constructed of hardened heat treated chrome vanadium steel. Comes with a reversible ratchet head that drives in both directions and measures torque in the clockwise direction. 2.5 foot pound increments. The ratchet gear is 24 tooth and is made of chrome vanadium steel. Plus or minus 4% accuracy. The Lexivon is right at 25 inches in length. The Lexivon is made in Taiwan. Does it really matter if a torque wrench is off by several pounds. The load cell will be keeping track of the maximum torque. Let's torque down a bolt to 40 foot pounds. At 40 foot pounds of torque, the clamp load is at 7,514 pounds. I've added 10 more pounds of torque for a total of 50 foot pounds, 9,022 pounds. So adding 10 foot pounds of torque added 1,500 pounds of clamp load to the bolt. To test the torque wrenches, I bought this Proto Torque Wrench Tester. It's the same unit that many calibration shops use since it provides accuracy to one tenth of a foot pound. The tester is set up the first peak mode. So the tester will measure and remember the exact amount of torque when you hear and feel the click. So even if I apply even more torque after the click, the tester will only display the first torque number. I'll set the error range on the tester to plus or minus 4% or two pounds. Let's kick off our first test with the Lexivon and I'll set the torque wrench at 50 foot pounds. The light on the left of center indicates that the torque did not make it within 4%. The middle light indicates that it's within 4% and the light on the right means it's over torqued. I'll test each brand six times. And the Lexavon is within 4% range on the first two bolts at 50.85 and 51.46 foot pounds. Unfortunately, the Lexavon really began having trouble and overshot way beyond the 4% to 53.93, 55.46, 54.46, and 55.19 on the last four attempts. At a price of $76, the second least expensive brand we'll be testing is made by Performance Tool. Torque wrench is certified and calibrated to plus or minus 4% accuracy in the right-hand direction and 6% in the left-hand direction. The torque range is from 25 to 250 foot-pounds. Measurements include both foot-pounds as well as newton meters. Clockwise and counterclockwise operation. 41 tooth ratchet head for precision torque control. Setting the torque. Hold handle and twist collar to the right to unlock. Turn handle clockwise or counterclockwise, right or left, to set the desired torque. Hold handle and twist collar to the left to lock. Performance tool is quite a bit shorter than the Lexavon at 22 inches. The performance the Performance Tool brand is made in Taiwan. And the Performance Tool really struggled blasting past 50 foot pounds plus the 4% range six out of six times. The third attempt was the worst at nearly 59 foot pounds. So Performance Tool averaged 55.2 foot pounds. At a price of $95 is this Craftsman brand. Comes with a certificate of calibration. The torque range is from 50 to 250 foot pounds. Scale stamped into housing showing inch and metric torque settings. Plus or minus 4% accuracy clockwise and counterclockwise plus or minus 6%. By material handle for comfort and grip. Locking feature adjusts quickly and easily for hassle free use. The Craftsman is by far the longest yet at 27 and a quarter inches in length. The Craftsman is made in Taiwan. And the Craftsman is within the 4% range in the first two attempts, but the Craftsman overshot the next two. The final two measurements are within range. So the Craftsman has done the best so far, averaging 52.18 pounds, off by 4.2%. At a price of $100, or just $5 more than the Craftsman, is this Cobalt brand. While the Cobalt storage case can be used, it's definitely not as durable as most of the other brands. The Cobalt comes with a certificate of calibration. The torque range is from 50 to 250 foot-pounds. The Cobalt is only designed to be used in the clockwise direction. Positive locking mechanism to dial in and lock in torque. Reversing ratcheting head allows you to torque left and right hand fasteners. The clockwise torque tolerance is plus or minus 4%. Also, the Cobalt doesn't have the metric scale, just the SAE. The Cobalt is 25 and 9 16 inches in length. The Cobalt is made in Taiwan. And the Cobalt provided much more consistent results than the Lexavon, Performance Tool, and Craftsman, ranging from 51 to 52 pounds for an overall average of 51.25 foot pounds. With a standard deviation of 0.42 foot-pounds, it has a much tighter pattern than the previous three brands. At a price of $125 is this Icon brand, which is sold at Harbor Freight. The range is from 50 to 250 foot-pounds. Includes a certificate of calibration, 90-tooth ratcheting mechanism, professional standard accuracy to plus or minus 4% clockwise and plus or minus 6% counterclockwise. Chrome-plated hardened steel body. Includes both SAE and metric scale. 
roll mark scale for better visibility. The Icon is 23 and 9 16 inches in length. The Icon is made in Taiwan. And the Harbor Freight Icon is performing even better than the Cobalt with most measurements within one foot pound of the 50 foot pound target. And the Icon moves into the lead with an average accuracy of 50.7 foot pounds with an average accuracy of 1.7% over target. At a price of $138 is this DeWalt brand. Includes a certificate of calibration. The range is from 50 to 250 foot pounds. Protective head bumper. The guaranteed accuracy is 4% clockwise and 6% counterclockwise. Includes a locking trigger, bi-material grip, one foot pound increments. Includes both SAE and metric scale. The DeWalt is the longest tool yet at 27.5 inches in length. The DeWalt brand is made in Taiwan. And the DeWalt started out just above 50 foot pounds on the first two measurements, just below 50 on the next three, and then just above 50 again. DeWalt averaged 50.11 foot pounds with a standard deviation of only 0.38 and moves into the lead over the Icon. At a price of $200 is this SK Tools brand. Very nice carrying case. Includes a certificate of calibration. Locking collar handle avoids changing torque value while in use. Ratchet design is very strong and durable. Torque range is from 50 to 250 foot-pounds. The clockwise torque tolerance is 4%, counterclockwise 6. The center position allows you to lock out the ratchet. Dual scale allows for easy conversion from SAE to metric. The SK Tools wrench is 24.25 inches. Made in the USA, US, and foreign parts. The SK Tools is a little bit high on the first measurement, a little low on the second, and finally begin having a pretty tight pattern at just above 50 on the final four test. So the SK Tools averaged 50.49 foot-pounds with a standard deviation of 1.09 and an average within 1% accuracy. At a price of $236 is this Proto brand. Includes a certificate of calibration. Includes a very nice carrying case. Manufactured to meet precision, highly accurate applications such as military and aerospace. Plus or minus 4% clockwise and 6% counterclockwise. Includes an SAE and metric scale. Proto Tools is 26 and 5 16 The Proto brand is made in USA. The Proto Tools performed well in the first attempt but overshot the second. Attempts 3 through 6 were very close to 50 foot pounds with an average of 50.59 and a standard deviation of 1.18. So SK Tools did slightly better. At a price of $290, the second most expensive brand we'll be testing is made by Weira. Includes a certificate of calibration. The torque range is from 45 to 220 foot-pounds. Easily setting and saving of the desired torque value with each audible and tactile click when reaching the scale values. Includes a 45-tooth reversible ratchet mechanism. Includes SAE as well as metric scale. The Weira can only be used in the clockwise direction. Weira is 23 and 5 eighths inches in length. The Weira is made in Taiwan. The first four measurements were within range, but the fifth one was quite a bit under. The overall average for the Weira is 49.84 foot-pounds with a standard deviation of 2.44. And the most expensive brand we'll be testing at $451 is made by Snap-on. The carrying case is very nice, but it does seem to be larger than necessary. The Snap-on is only designed to be used in the clockwise direction. Just like the other brands, the Snap-on does include a certificate of calibration. The torque range on the Snap-on is from 50 to 250 foot-pounds. Includes both an SAE and metric scale. Snap the snap-on is 25 and 9 16 inches in length. The snap-on is made in USA. And the snap-on is remaining around 51 foot-pounds and has an average of 51.39, which is 2.7% above the 50 foot-pound mark. However, the snap-on is the most consistent with a standard deviation of only 0.34 foot-pounds. Finally, we'll be doing some testing on an old Craftsman torque wrench that I've had for about 11 years. The torque wrench on the old Craftsman is from 20 to 150 foot-pounds. It's only designed for clockwise use. The old Craftsman torque wrench is made in USA. And the old Craftsman got off to a great start and things are going well until the last measurement when the Craftsman missed the target by nearly 4 foot-pounds for an overall average of 50.84 foot-pounds. The DeWalt came the closest to 50 foot-pounds on average with all six measurements staying within the 4% torque tolerance. SK Tools performed well at 50.49, Icon 50.7, Cobalt 51.25, and Snap-on 51.38 foot-pounds. While the Weir averaged very close to 50 foot-pounds, it had one measurement that was outside the 4% torque tolerance. If you need a torque wrench for repair such as torquing down a cylinder head where consistency of torque and clamp load is incredibly important, the Snap-on came out on top with a standard deviation of 0.34 foot-pounds. However, the DeWalt performed nearly as well at 0.38, Cobalt 0.42, Icon 0.84, and the Craftsman 1.03 foot-pounds. I also took six measurements for each brand at 100, 150, 200, and 250 foot-pounds. After a total of 30 measurements for each brand, only the Icon, SK Tools, and the Snap-on completed all 30 measurements within the plus or minus 
4% torque tolerance range. However, the Cobalt, DeWalt, and the Proto tools were outside the 4% range just one time. If you're looking for a torque wrench that comes the closest to the target torque on average, the Icon came out on top, only missing the target torque by 0.2%. Weira performed very well at 0.7%, Snap-on and SK Tools 0.8, and Proto Tools 0.9%. For precision work such as torquing down a cylinder head, having the exact same amount of clamp load or downward pressure is extremely important. The Snap-on came in on top with a standard deviation of 0.51 foot-pounds. Proto finished in second at 0.68, SK Tools 0.96, Icon 1.02, and Craftsman 1.12 foot-pounds. Let's measure the performance of the torque wrenches in the counterclockwise direction next, beginning at 250 foot-pounds. We'll skip the Lexavon since it's not designed to be used in the counterclockwise direction. And a performance tool wrench overshot the first measurement by 28 foot-pounds. And a performance tool was outside the plus or minus range twice out of six measurements for an average of 261.8 foot-pounds. And a Craftsman performed very well in the counterclockwise direction with an average torque of 247.85 foot-pounds. The Craftsman had a standard deviation of 0.9 foot-pounds with all six measurements within the 6% torque tolerance range. The Cobalt doesn't advertise use in the counterclockwise direction, but let's see how it performs anyway. And the Cobalt performed better than the performance tool, but not quite as well as the Craftsman, averaging 245.18 foot-pounds. And the Icon was slightly more consistent than the Cobalt with a standard deviation of 2.33 foot-pounds. And the Icon averaged 255.4 foot-pounds, or 2.1% over the target. And the DeWalt averaged 1.4% under the 250-pound target compared to 0.9% for the Craftsman. However, the DeWalt has a standard deviation of only 0.67 foot-pounds compared to 0.9 for the Craftsman. And the SK Tools overshot the target by 2.2% on average, which is nearly as good as the Icon's 2.1%. However, just like the clockwise direction, the SK Tools provided more consistent results than the Icon, with a standard deviation of 1.45 compared to 2.33 for the Icon. And the Proto Tools performed even better than the SK Tools with an average of 2% over target. However, the Proto Tools performed very well with a standard deviation of only 0.72 skipping the Weira since it won't function in the counterclockwise direction. And the Snap-on doesn't advertise that it's capable of counterclockwise use, but let's do it anyway just to see how it performs. And the Snap-on did the best yet at just 0.7% above target. It also had the best standard deviation of only 0.52 foot-pounds, very impressive. After testing the torque wrenches at 250, 150, and then 50 foot-pounds for a total of 18 measurements each, the Snap-on DeWalt and Proto were the only three brands that didn't have any measurements that fell outside the plus or minus 6% torque tolerance range. Of those three brands, the Snap-on came the closest to averaging 150 foot-pounds at 151.17. DeWalt performed very well at 147.91 and Proto Tools 152.7. Craftsman and Icon each had one measurement fall outside the 6% torque tolerance range. Not surprisingly, the only three brands that stayed within the 6% torque tolerance range also delivered the best performance for standard deviation. The Proto Tools came out on top at 0.6 foot-pounds, DeWalt 0.8, and Snap-on 0.85. If you have multiple vehicles and you torque down the lug nuts on your vehicle every few months, it won't take long before you have hundreds of cycles on your torque wrench. I'm going to go ahead and cycle each of the torque wrenches a thousand times each and we'll test them again for accuracy. After a thousand cycles, I gave the torque wrenches a break for a couple of hours. Let's test the Lexavon again at 50 foot-pounds. And the Lexavon averaged 53.73 foot-pounds before a thousand cycles and the spring steel has lost some of its strength with the average dropping to 52.01 foot-pounds. Unfortunately, three measurements were outside of the 4% range. Before 1,050 cycles, the performance tool averaged 55.21 foot-pounds. All the use had a huge impact on the performance tool, with the average dropping nearly 5 foot-pounds to 50.68. Unfortunately, it had two measurements fall outside the 4% torque tolerance range. While Lexavon and performance tool experienced a drop-in torque, the Craftsman performed nearly the same as before on the first three measurements. Unfortunately, it overshot pretty badly on the fourth and fifth measurements. The Craftsman averaged 52.73 foot-pounds. The Cobalt performed very well before 1,000 cycles, but it really struggled with four measurements outside of the plus or minus 4% range after all the use. Three measurements were too low and one was too high with a standard deviation of over two foot-pounds. Before 1,050 cycles, the Icon averaged 50.7 foot-pounds with zero measurements outside the 4% torque tolerance range. The Icon did fairly well on the first five measurements, but was off by nearly 5.5 pounds on the sixth measurement. The Icon had a standard deviation of 2.45. 
Before 1,050 cycles with the DeWalt, all six measurements at 50 foot-pounds landed within the plus or minus 4% range. After all the use, the DeWalt missed the target two out of six times with an overall average of 51.33 foot-pounds. The SK Tools averaged 50.49 foot-pounds before 1,050 cycles. And even after all the use, it performed nearly the same at 50.17 foot-pounds. Unfortunately, one of the measurements did fall outside the 4% window. Right new out of the box, the Proto Tools averaged 50.59 foot-pounds. And even after all the use, it performed nearly the same at 50.24. Just like several of the other brands, it fell outside the 4% range on one of the measurements. Before all the use, the Weir averaged 49.84 foot-pounds, and it had one measurement that fell outside the 4% window. After over a 1,000 cycles, all the measurements are now within the 4% window, and the Weir averaged 49.28 foot-pounds. The Snap-on averaged 51.38 foot-pounds before 1,050 cycles, and it averaged 50.47 after all the use. It had a standard deviation of only 0.34 foot-pounds before, and now it has a standard deviation of 0.17. Very impressive. So after 1,050 cycles, only two brands had all six measurements fall within the 4% range. The Snap-on averaged 50.47 and the Weira 49.28. SK Tools, Proto, and the Icon fell outside the 4% range only once. SK Tools averaged 50.17, Proto 50.24, and Icon 50.45 foot-pounds. After 1,050 cycles, the Snap-on continued to have the best standard deviation at only 0.17 foot-pounds. SK Tools finished in second at 1.11, Weir 1.18, Proto 1.43, and DeWalt 1.6 foot-pounds. The size of the head on a torque wrench is sometimes a factor in tight spaces. I measured the width and the thickness of the the ratchet heads, the Craftsman DeWalt and Proto Tools offer the least front to back thickness of all the brands at 0.71 inches. The Snap-on isn't too much thicker at 0.75. The Harbor Freight Icon's ratchet has the narrowest profile at 1.61 inches, but the Snap-on is nearly the same at 1.62. Performance Tool 1.63, Craftsman and DeWalt 1.64 inches. If you're trying to apply a lot of torque, a longer handle will offer more leverage, making it easier to reach the desired torque. And the DeWalt is the longest tool at 27.5 inches, but the Craftsman is nearly as long at 27.3. Proto 26.3, Snap-on and Cobalt 25.6 inches. When working in tight spaces, the swing arc of a ratchet can make a huge difference. To provide realistic swing arc calculations, I measured the swing arc with a socket attached to a fastener. And the Snap-on came out on top at 15.6 degrees. The very affordable Harbor Freight Icon performed well at 21 degrees, DeWalt and Craftsman 25, and Cobalt 26.6 degrees. 10,000 cycles with a torque wrench, I definitely don't recommend doing that, not a good idea. Now, if you want the best torque wrench, the Snap-on is definitely it. It just doesn't make mistakes. However, $451 is definitely more than I'm willing to spend. If your budget's only around $150, I really like both the Icon as well as the DeWalt. If you have a budget of around $200, the SK Tools is a great torque wrench and would be my choice. All the videos in this channel, including this one, are viewer suggested. So if you have a video idea, I hope you'll take time to leave a comment. Thanks so much for watching. Please take care and I look forward to next time.